Hello there, YouTube sewing community. Welcome to my channel, Tribeca Designs. My name is Rebecca and I love to sew. I love to upcycle, I love to design, I love to refashion, I love to make, like so many of you, I love to create. Thanks for tuning in. This video is going to be a special treat. I will be sharing my top five handmade essentials. Now this is a YouTube sewing community tag video that was started by Sarah over at Naughty Known Crafts. If you haven't already, be sure to check out her channel. She has some lovely makes to share with you guys. And all of her information is below in the description box. She started this wonderful hashtag. And thank you, a special shout out to Natita at So Natural Dang for tagging me and also to Chalisa at So She Designs. Thank you ladies so much for thinking of me on this uh, tag. And if I missed anyone, it's only because I didn't get notifications. So don't charge it to my heart. Um, so let me just go ahead and get started sharing. The first thing on the list to share is my, my essential top is what I was trying to say. <laughs> So this is the number one pattern that I typically use for my tops. It is a new look, 6175. I believe I purchased this back in the early 90s. And I had to really think about truthfully, what is my essential top, my go-to? And so what I did was I just thought about the top pattern that I have used most frequently. And hands down, it's this. I love a wrap blouse. This is an easy make and it is so versatile. I have used this kind of like as a sloper to launch some of my design work on. And I just love this pattern. I know it's old school. Um, if you can't find it, I'm, I'm sure it's no longer in print. Um, any basic wrap top would be a good substitute. Let me share with you guys just some of the lovelies that I've made using this that I still have. Most of them have been sold. Now, this is the pattern. Um, yes, I have, like I said, hacked it, redesigned off of it, but this is the base wrap. Now here, I extended it to make it a more like a tunic link blouse. I'll throw up a quick little video of me in this. Um, this one and the next one that I'm going to share with you are both on a video that I'll link in the description that I did last year around this time. Uh, no, I think it was last fall titled My Purple Mix. And oh my gosh. Um, it features some of these lovely um, garments that I have made using this pattern. As you can see, I added this band and just did some unique cutouts um, or cutting, I should say. Uh, changed the sleeve length. This is also kind of like a jacket. I extended the length. Um, there's some more pictures for you guys to see. But yeah, I would say this is definitely my go-to top. I love a good wrap. Now, my essential bottom, hands down, and I talk about this garment a lot on my channel, is a basic mini skirt. I just have always had an affinity um, to wear basic mini skirts. This is just one of the recent patterns that's kind of like my go-to. The rest of my views so many times, they're kind of like disintegrating. But I've had this pattern probably, I don't know, several years, we'll say that. Let me see if I can lay my eyes on a copyright date for you really quick. It's Simplicity, can you see that? There we go, 1666. Yes, and Lisette is the designer's name, I believe. Um, but yeah, let me see real quick, real quick, real quick. 
2013. I'll link all the information for these patterns in the description if anyone's interested. But anyways, just any basic mini skirt pattern. Here's the line, line drawing on the back. I have a tendency to always add a waistband because I just like the comfort of having that extra around the waist to help draw me in. These are some of like the very basic skirts that I've made. I got a lot of wear out of these when I worked in corporate America. That's my um, lap zipper that is like my go-to zipper for all of my skirts. I also have a great tutorial on my channel for that. Check the link in the description if you'd like to check that out. But yeah, see just uh, two front darts cut on the center front, waistband, and your side backs with darts and the center zipper in the back. Um, I got a lot of wear out of these, like I said, when I worked at Corporate America. And now that I don't have to dress up for work, these are still some really good go-to skirts to wear with t-shirts and sneakers, with sweatshirts with denim jackets. You can also make them casual. Um, yeah, so, ooh, just with a pop of color, these are go really well. And of course, you can design off of these, like here. Um, I used a quilted pillowcase to make this skirt, and then I used a scarf to make these lovely pockets. And also, um, for the waistband detailing, and then just put a little band on the bottom. I will throw up a couple of photos um, so you guys can kind of see what those look like. Like I say, this basic uh, mini skirt is definitely my go-to bottom. Now for the one piece, I'm gonna venture off the beaten path a little bit and just tell you what my one piece has to be. You looking at a millinery mama. I used to have an online hat shop where I made all kinds of hats, all styles and whatnot. And so um, this is the pattern that I have used to make multiple hats. This is the view for this particular one. Um, yeah, and I will throw up a few photos of some others that I have used, using various fibers and just styling it slightly different. But oh, mama mia, this is actually some uh, upholstery fabric. And this is a uh, gold metallic bias tape, feathers from Hobby Lobby. And yeah, you could style this all kinds of ways. I don't really want to mess my hair up, but oh, girl, it's not all the way down because my hair is kind of high today. But yeah, you could cock this to the side. Um, you could put the brim down. You could do so many things. I think I typically wear one side up, slightly cocked over my left eye. And <laughs> girl, I be feeling like I'm doing something when I wear this. Vogue 8844. Um, like I say, you guys know. Yeah, I have bought patterns in years because I have so many good ones that are my essentials. So I was looking for the year on this. 2012, yeah, I remember now. <laughs> so mwah, hats off baby to all of my wonderful essentials. Now, forgive me, I keep, I'm having a hard time, you guys, I confess. My camera lens is on the end of my phone, but I want to always look right in the middle of the camera. So if I ever look like I'm looking over your shoulder, please forgive me. Video production is not my strong suit. Garment construction definitely is. So thank you for your patience on that. Let's move on. Um, I'm going to go to the layering pieces because, oh my gosh, if you guys know me, anything about me personally, one thing I love to make more than anything is coats and jackets, outerwear pieces, 
It gets really cold here in the Midwest and I just love to have a nice collection of coats and jackets so I can look fly on the outside before I take off my coat. And so let me just share some pieces with you all. Okay, this is um, my go-to uh, jacket coat pattern made out of um, purple upholstery fabric I purchased at Walmart several years ago. I'm going to throw up a video in a few minutes of me modeling this. But oh my gosh, you guys. Now again, this is going to be something that I hacked. Um, and I always do a little bit of surface design on my clothes. That's just kind of like my aesthetic. But um, I added something to this. Hold on just a second. Let me get the pattern. This is the basic pattern. This is the view right here I typically start out with. It is a Vogue 8350. Another uh, one that I've had for quite some time, several years. But you can find stuff like this now still in your pattern books. Um, so this is usually how I start and then I may sometimes add something on the bottom if I want uh, to extend the length or add more coverage. And also for those of you who may have already seen my red dragon jacket that I shared around Christmas time, same pattern. And now I'm going to share with you oh, a beauty. This one, mm, I call Tan Tiger. It was an art piece. It was something that I made. I, I used carbon shells for embellishing and the base of it is upholstery fabric. Also purchased at Walmart several years ago back when they used to have lovely upholstery remnants. And then this um, leopard print, I just, you know, constructed my own like design work and did some um, creative top stitching. And then on the back, I added an element uh, to give a nod to African culture. I actually made this jacket for an art show several years ago and I won first place in the textile category. So that was real special to me. It's fully lined and I, actually made it for that um, event, put on significant weight, and hung it up in my closet where it's been for years. Since then, I've lost the weight, and I can actually get in it comfortably again. Oh, I'm so thankful because this needs to be worn. It is so lovely. It feels great on. It's the perfect weight. Anyway, I'm just saying, off of that one simple pattern, I have made several, and this is just some of the ones that I'm showing you guys. I've done a, a ton more, but I would say this has definitely been a go-to for me. Moving forward though, I think I'm kind of moving away from some of my go-tos, except for that wrap top. I'm, I'm still definitely into that, but some of this other stuff, I've kind of like put to the side and I'm doing new things now, but in the past, these have been um, some of my go-tos. Now let's get into this wild card, wild card, wild card, wild, say it with me, wild card, wild card, okay? I'm super excited to share this with you, all, with you all. I know, sometimes I get excited when I play back my videos, I'm like, what did she say? What did I say? You didn't say that right. So again, thank you for being patient with me. But this next wild card, this next one that I'm sharing, which is the wild card, does not have a pattern. Well, maybe not a tradition, a pattern in the traditional sense. This is the pattern. <laughs> it is a basic round shaped placemat. There I go looking over there again. Where, whatever. Okay. And so it is for bag making. Now, through the years, I have always had an obsession for circle-shaped bags. Don't know why, but I call them my fortune cookies. 
and I typically will purchase uh, belts from the thrift store to use as the handles to make these lovely round shaped bags that I do surface design on. Uh, this one, of course, as you can see, is a nod to Chinese culture. And then um, the base of it is actually uh, burlap. This is scraps of velvet fabric that I top stitched on. These are some, um, oh, I can't remember what these are called. These little uh, snap embellishment thingies. <laughs> Y'all know what they are. But, um, and then this is when I first decided to start uh, making French knots. I actually, I can't believe I did that. I took the time to hand stitch the word joy in French knots. But I'm really proud of this bag. Unfortunately, it doesn't see the light of day enough. I need to either sell some of these treasures, because these are treasures, works of art, if I may say so myself. Okay, and um, the, the, um, this burgundy you see here is actually a sweater. So this is kind of like, when I say I love to upcycle, when I say I love to design, you can see the elements of that in these makes. If you look closely, all hand knots, French knots that I did by hand. So when you talk about a handmade essential, this is it. If you look on the inside, you can see I made two pockets. So this is not just a dumping bag. You have some compartments in there. And I just put Velcro here to hold it together. I'm going to do a tutorial on these circle bags or either a sew along. Why don't we do a sew along, ladies? Go go get those circular placemats ready. And I promise you, in the near future, we'll do that. We'll do a sew along. Um, here's another fortune cookie. I'm going to take the price tags off. <laughs> I used to take these at trunk shows. But anyway, um... Here's another one. I always have loved this yin and yang symbol here. And I found some fabric with all this lovely calligraphy on it. And I was inspired. This has a suede feel to it. The ivory and the, the ivory is a suede. The black is actually black velvet. And then, you know, you could still purchase this, I believe, at Hobby Lobby. It has a leather-ish suede look and so I just made straps out of that and um, look at that lining Ooh, I told you you was going to get a treat today I love my fortune cookies and so here is one I think this fabric I also purchased at Hobby Lobby years ago in the home deck department and then this was an apparel fabric. It has like, oh, you can see, look at all the different texture there. Uh, these were like either belts or jewelry that I harvested off of something um, using a satin stitch to add to the, and it's yin and yang. Ying and yang. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. I can't remember right now. Forgive me if I said that wrong, please. Uh, don't want to insult anyone's culture. Um, but yeah, and I I just love, it's just so beautiful to me, the handwriting there, um, the, the lettering, the characters, the calligraphy. So I have used this in my fortune cookie bag making, the back is plain. But, um, you know, here it, again, it's just a belt that was thrifted for the strap. This is a really great crossbody bag. It's a conversation piece. It's functional. It's wearable art. Um, again, the inside, of course, fully lined, has multiple pockets in there. So it's not just a dumping bag, but yet yeah, it lays nice and, and flat on the body. I love it. I love it. I love it. So um, yeah, we're, we'll have to do a uh, circle bag fortune cookie tutorial really soon or so along let's sew together okay so go get your placements 
So now it's time for me to tag some ladies and no pressure. I hope it's okay with you guys that I did this because I did not consult with anyone before uh, mentioning their channel. But I do want to say that I think all of these ladies are wonderful sewists. And if you haven't already, be sure and check out their channel. Check out their videos. You know the, the routine. Like, comment, sub subscribe, share, etc. Okay, I'm going to start out with someone whom I admire. And I just want to say, I think sometimes when a person inspires you, you should let them know. And I haven't had much conversation with this person online, but I do admire Anita at Anita by Design. So I would love to tag her because I haven't seen one of her videos in a while. So Miss Anita, I'm tagging you. Love you and your channel. Okay, I want to also um, mention my girl. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I had to, I had to mention you, boo. Offset as Stitched Treasures. No pressure, sweets. But I wanted to tag you for this. And also, um, Andrew makes. I think Andrew may have already been tagged, but she's so sweet and so cute, and I love her makes. So I wanted to tag Andrew. And um, Anna Marie, and you guys um, know who she is, Miss Anna Marie at Anna Marie's Workshop. Um, I want to tag So What You Like, and um, who else? Oh, and forgive me, sweetheart, if I mispronounce your name, but you are beautiful, and I would love to see your essentials. Shutoka J? Did I say that right? Shutoka J? Okay, guys, all of those um, lovely ladies that I mentioned, their channel links are in the description box below. <laughs> below. <laughs> below. <laughs> Go forth, watch the videos, and conquer on the sewing machine. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed my makes, please comment. Let me know. Uh, share the video. Like, subscribe. Be sure and come back for more, especially for that so long we're gonna do on the circle handbag but uh i love you guys and um i love this community so till next time bye